Welcome to Biology Access. In today's class, I'll be continuing with my biostatistics series on the topic contingency table and p squared. You know you are new to this channel. Please kindly press the subscribe button and click on me so that you get notified whenever I post a new video. The contingency table and the p squared, or the contingency table is actually a tool in statistics that is used to actually uh, summarize and establish a relationship between two categories. Now the chi-square on this part is actually used to test these categories if there is actually significant difference between these two categories. So we'll be taking a practical question to actually, I'll actually be solving a bacterial theory question on how these little experiments can be analyzed using contingency table and the chi-square. So the question, laboratory animals were used in an experiment to test for the efficacy of a newly produced vaccine. The table below gives the necessary information. Now, this group of organisms were inoculated. These are not inoculated, all right? These are non inoculated uh, individuals. For these that are inoculated, we have 250 infected and 1250 1, non infected. For the non inoculated individual, we have 800 infected and this 1700 non infected. So they are asking you to use contingency uh, two by two contingency table. To analyze the above data and use the chi square to test if the vaccine has significant effect. So, usually, your non hypothesis will always tell you that there is no significant difference between the category that we are uh, inoculated with the vaccine and those that we are non inoculated with the vaccine. So there is no significant difference. All right? In the non hypothesis, any difference you observe may be as a result of what? By chance. Right, but the alternate hypothesis always say that there is a significant difference between those that were inoculated and those that were not what, inoculated in terms of what the infection rate. So your chi squared uh, formula is written on the board, you can see there. So let's now use the contingency table to analyze and now use your, uh, your chi squared. All right? So look at our table here. The total number of individuals that were in the inoculated group is 1,600. And of this, you can use your contingency table to analyze that of the 1,600, 350 were actually infected, and this 1,250 was non infected. This is approximately 1 ratio 3.5 or so. 1 ratio 3.5 or so. You take, decide to take the ratio. I think you have an approximate value around this region. I have to use the calculator to get the precise value. All right. Why, if you take a look at this, this is 2,500 individuals who are actually uh, in the non inoculated group. And of these, 800 were infected, and this were not, 1,700 were not infected. And if you take an approximate value of this, it's actually a 1 ratio of 2, approximately. This plus this is 1,600. So we can just say approximately what? 1 ratio 2. Why this is even closer to 1 ratio 4? So using an ordinary contingency table, you can just give this simple analysis. And you can even state that the total number of infected, both inoculated and non-inoculated is 1,150. Why the total number of non-inoculated individuals, both for in, uh, this, uh, in both categories, is what? 2,950. In this trial, using the consistency table, the total of 4,100 individuals were actually what used for this experiment. So this is actually a simple contingency table analysis, a summary of it. But we can now test this difference that we are observing in the ratio, or this difference that we are observing. Is this significant to say that the vaccine has effect on the infection rate? That is where T square now come into play. So as I mentioned earlier, the formula for T square is this. I'll have the observed minus expected 
square all over what expected. Now, your observed value is the one that was given in the question. So, what you just do is put your table in this format. You always look for the total for the rows, the total for the column, then the overall total in this place. Now, once you have done that, look at what I did. How did I get this? This plus this. I have this. This plus this. I have this. Now, how do I get the total in the bottom? This plus this. I have this. This plus this. You have this. How do I get the total here? Either I add these two things together, I'll have this. Or even if I add these two things together, I'll see I get this. All right? So remember that this is the total number of individuals that was subjected to the what? The trial. Now, once you have done this, this is the value for the observed. All right? Now, how do you get the expected value? Remember, for the inoculated, we have infection and non-infection. For the non-inoculated, we have infection and non-infection. So we now have to get the expected what are you expected to get here in an ordinary situation so now how do you get the expected this um, this column here is connected to this place and it's connected to this place it's trace it is connected to this place you trace it is connected to this place so for this to get the expected here i'll use this to multiply this divide by this so we we'll have one one Five zero times one six zero zero all over four thousand one hundred. Now, if you do your calculation, you have this value. Now, to get the next expected, that is this. This is connected to this place and it's connected to what this place. I'll use this to multiply this. I'll multiply by what? I'll divide by the total. So we also have. 2950 times this divide by this. We we'll get this. For the next one here, this is connected to this place and this is connected to this place. I'll use this to multiply this and use to divide this. So we now have 1150 times 2500 divided by this. Remember, this is connected to this place and it's connected to this place. Why here? Why for this last column here? This is connected to this place and this is connected to this place. So I'll use this to multiply this. Divide by this, I'll now, I'll now get this. So if you do that for all the categories, you have all your expected. So once you have your expected, what do you do? It's simple. You now apply it to what? You now put it into your chi-square table. The chi-square, as we mentioned before, is observed. Of what is observed? This is the observed. What is expected of this place? Of this place? This is the expected of this place. Minus expected, then square. All over what the formula is all over expected plus the next one i can decide to choose this as the next even if you follow any other even if i to choose this it doesn't matter so let's just choose this so for observing this list is this expected is this which you calculated for then you square this minus this you square it just the way the formula is then all over what the expected the next one is this 800 observed, then expected here is what 701. Subtract, then remember, always put your square. All right? So, all of our expected. So, if you do that, you have your value. All right? So, once you have done this, if I now, so once you have done this, if I now use 350 minus 448. 0.78. I will get this value here. If you subtract the one we have there, you also get here. Remember, there is square. So, this is how you get there. Then you also take the bottom of all the expected. Now, once you have done that, if you square any negative value, you get positive value. If you square this, it's positive value, you get this. If you square this, you get this. And if you square this, you get this. If I carry out my division, I'll have this. Do the same for here. I'll have this. If I carry out my division here, I'll have this. If I carry out my division here, I'll have this. Now, if I add everything, now it makes 49.5. So this is my chi-square value. All right. After getting that, the next thing that you need to do is to get your degree of freedom. All right. You know that it's always essential to get it so that you can get use that to get your tabulated value. All right, so the degree of freedom is the category minus what? One. 
by subtract one. Definitely, we have is two by two um, chi square or two categories. So two minus one is equal to what one. Now, if you check at the beginning of the question, you realize that the tabulated value, that is the critical value in the chi square table, was given. All right. In some cases, it may not be given, so you may not have to check the chi square table yourself, which is very easy. So the tabulated value in this case is actually 3.841, while the calculated chi-square value is 49.5. Please take note, in this case, at the beginning of the question, we are given the tabulated or the critical value from the chi-square table. In some cases, you may not be given that. The chi-square value is actually being displayed on the board now, and uh, how to get it is also being displayed. Right, but in this question, the uh, value we're given at, at the beginning of the question. All right, now since this calculated chi square value is greater than this, we can actually what, reject the non hypothesis. Remember, the hypothesis is that the non hypothesis is that there is no the vaccine does not have any effect. All right, there is no significant uh, difference between those that are inoculated and do that and are not inflated in terms of infection rate. Why the alternate hypothesis is that applying the vaccine we have significant effect on the infection rate. So since this table, the calculated value is greater than the tabular value, it simply means that there is a significant what difference. We reject what the non hypothesis and conclude that there is that the vaccine statistically would have effect on the infection what rate significant effect so please take note of this the vaccine have statistically conclude that the vaccine statistically have significant what effect on the infection rate so that is the end of this if you have any question you can always send to biologyaccess at gmail.com please subscribe to support this channel thank you